Inside Azure Active Directory, there's a section called Roles and Administrators. And you can see a lot of different preset administration roles within this Roles and Administrators section. And to the right of each one, you can see what it is that they can do. So for instance, if we have directory readers, to the right of that, we can see can read basic directory information. And we can see the reason why that particular role is there. It's commonly used to grant directory read access to applications. I want to scroll down a little bit further and go to where it says Global Administrator. I'll go ahead and select Global Administrator. And here we can see that I am a member of this Global Administrator type of right. And that is the only right that gives you rights to everything else. So you want to be very careful when you assign anyone to the global administrator role. Here you can see all the different role permissions that go along with it. This is going to have more role permissions than any other of these roles and administrators area. Now I'm going to go back to roles and administrators and I'm going to uncheck the box and choose to create a new custom role. So I'm going to give this role a name of test role because I want to delete it when I'm done just so I don't accidentally assign anything to anyone that might give them more rights than they should have. So I can choose to clone a custom role. So if I do that, it allows me to take a role that's already there and I can clone that, which might save me some time. I don't have a custom role that I can clone from, so I'm just going to go ahead and choose the start from scratch and click next. Now I have the options for permissions. And these are going to be Azure Active Directory permissions. So I can go ahead and choose multiple boxes if I'd like. I'll just randomly choose several different boxes, click Next. And now if I assign anyone this custom role, these are going to be the roles and permissions that they're going to be able to use. So I'll click on Create. And sometimes it takes a minute for it to create, and you'll have to refresh in order to see it. So I'll click on Refresh. And then if you have a lot of roles, you can just go ahead and type in what you're looking for. And there's my test role. Now I need to assign some users or groups into this test role assignment. So I can choose an individual and I can also choose groups as well. Now there's some roles where you can only add in groups and not users, but there are others where you can do both like this one, add, and now I have a user as well as a group. You'll notice you don't have the option to save anything. As soon as you go ahead and add that user, then the user or the group are going to automatically be saved without you having to click anything. Now that I'm all done, I'll go ahead and click the X. There are some additional things I can do with this new role. One is I can choose Diagnose and Solve Problems. So I'll click on Diagnose and Solve Problems. And here we can go ahead and click on various different common problems that come up with creating roles and administrators, such as what if my previous global administrator left the organization? I'll click on View Guidance, and it gives me information on what I can do, such as opening up a ticket with the Microsoft team. Here we can click on Access Reviews, and you can see nothing is there yet, but what it's going to do is show us if anybody has actually used this particular role yet. And once they do, then it'll show up there. If we click on Audit Logs, then we can get detailed information about users with this role. Roles and administrators should not be added lightly, as it does give users and groups direct access to resources in your Azure Active Directory.